Hi, I'm Keith Cooper and I'm here in Landonno, Wales for the RES's National Astronomy Meeting. Um, I'm joined now by Martin Lunn, MBE, former curator of astronomy at Yorkshire Museum in York, and Dr. Lila Ricosi, uh, a historian from Texas. And um, they've been presenting a, uh, research about the possible supernova of the Cassiopeia A supernova remnant. Um, Astronomers believe this exploded sometime in the 17th century, but nobody knows when because nobody actually saw the supernova explode, which is a little bit mysterious. There's been explanations, possibly, that interstellar dust blocked the light, or that it was a cloudy day, and here in Britain it's <laughs> unseasonal, but it's sunny in, in North Wales here. But um, you've come up with a, an alternative theory. Would you like to explain a little bit more about, about your idea? Yeah, certainly. Um... Well, as you rightly say, the supernova is known to have exploded in the 17th century, but there are no observations um, up until now. Uh, I came across a picture in a book um, a few years back, and um, it was a picture um, produced in 1660, and it showed a bright star near the sun. And in my rather simplistic way, I simply had a eureka moment and thought, bright star, 17th century, supernova, must be Cassiopeia A. Um, at that point, of course, um, Lila, who uh, I knew from her work here in, um, in Britain, um, approached me and said, um, you found a picture in a book, and that proves everything. Uh, to which I said, no. Um, and um, we then formed a partnership, and we started investigating um, what this bright object in the sky might be. Now, with Cassiopeia A, there are lots and lots of uncertainties on the astronomical side, so how far away the object actually is. So there is lots of uncertainty, and certainly the evidence produced by astronomers in various institutions does give a reasonable scatter of when the light should have reached the Earth. But Lila uh, went down to London and did some investigations. She found some material from 1630 which really puts Cassiopeia A in a different light. Okay, and Lila, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the historical relevance um, of this picture in the book that Martin found? Well, the, it was from 1660, which um, I'm not sure how many of um, your astronomers that, that watch this uh, are going to appreciate this, but the 1660s are known for being a very um, contentious period politically. You've got the Restoration, you've got Charles II returning from exile on the continent. Uh, you've had 20 years of, of civil war and unrest. Uh, so it, it's an, a period of time that's full of propaganda. So the problem that I had as a historian is, is having to unpick what was propaganda and what might have been uh, a recording of a genuine astronomical event. Um, as I said to Martin, ideally what we would need would be to get it back to as close to 1630 as possible and to find a contemporary source uh, or sources that confirmed the sighting. And the supernovas can be very bright. Um, so why are there so few records of this of this supernova? Uh, Cas A is a Type 2b supernova. Uh, now most supernova are visible for weeks, if not months, um, at a time. But because it's a Type 2b, it's very very short duration. We're talking of a week, possibly even less than that. Now you've already made comments about uh, the weather in Britain, <laughs> and it's reasonable to assume that in the 17th century the weather wasn't that dissimilar to now. You have two or three cloudy days and people are not going to see it. And if we also consider 1630, we're only 20 years after the invention of the telescope. So we're really into the very early part of what we might call modern astronomy. And you don't have this situation where perhaps the professional astronomers around uh, Europe were clouded out uh, and didn't see it. Or, of course, maybe they did see it. It's been recorded and that information has been observed perhaps by historians but not by astronomers and that then leads to all sorts of issues because um, the work we've done uh, has been very very cross-disciplinary as you obviously see that um, Lila's a historian I'm an astronomer and Lila is very well aware of the fact that the material she's looked at has been looked at by other historians but not with an astronomical eye and that is the importance of this sort of research in that material or further material on Cas A could quite possibly be out there and possibly has been seen by many many historians but until it's looked at with an astronomical eye it, the, the equation just doesn't come together and you presented here yesterday um, in front of a, an audience of astronomers 
Uh, what kind of feedback did you get? Um, it's been, I think, a bit of a, a mixed bag. Uh, we've had some very astute questions. Um, one person asked us about um, Chinese records. Um, we've also had some questions about the um, relative significance, um, religiously, politically, of, of such a, a sighting. And by that I mean, did the individuals in the 1630s um, make a big deal about seeing something like this? Was it a common occurrence, in other words? Um, so some of the questions have been, have been quite good. Um, as far as the astron astronomical questions, I'll, <laughs> I'll leave that to Martin. <laughs> uh, I, I think the astronomers um, are reasonably happy with the evidence we've produced. They, the inference seems to be, yeah, okay, it's a fair point, it's a good point. Can you get more? And I think that's what we're now looking at. And I think the future uh, now is to get Lila to do more research in 17th century documents. Obviously, that means getting her over from Texas back into Britain uh, to spend some time down at Oxford and um, basically sort of pour over the material there and just see whether we can get more material. And maybe, perhaps, at um, NAM 2012, we might be able to give a progress report of uh, where we are. That would be really excellent. Um, Martin, Lila, thank you very much for your time and enjoy the seaside. So, the mystery of Cassiopeia A, is it solved? We'll find out soon. <laughs>